I survived 100 days in a Minecraft war, the first of its kind. In this video, 10 factions battle it out. The rules are simple. Every single faction has a beacon. This beacon must be placed inside your base. If an enemy destroys this beacon, you are out of the game. It's the last beacon standing. 10 factions, 100 days. Who's gonna win? If you guys go on to enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. It helps me out a lot and it lets me know that you guys want more of this type of content. But let the Minecraft war begin. Day one started with all factions starting at the center of the map. We all dropped from the sky. You can see every faction scurring, trying to get out of here as quick as possible. Day one and day two, well, they were grace periods. No fighting could commence yet. Here's the current squad that we got. Tommers, the absolute brains of the operation. Stockmans, the beefy bodyguard. Dev Awake, the trusty pilot. Jack, my right hand man. And Faction's Doc. Well, let me just say, he's a killing machine. If you guys know who he is, you know who he is. Perfect member to have on our team. We got scouting. We wanted to find the most suitable place to make a Minecraft base. See, here's the thing. To win a Minecraft war, you gotta have the best base on the server. So let's explain our base. The first thing our base needs is plenty of water. And luckily, we're in the middle of an ocean, so we have plenty of that. We're then gonna build a big square base. We're then gonna raise that off the surface of the water so that we have a 360 view of the surrounding area. This is going to be our battle platform. We're then gonna build a wall all around the edges. And then one by one, we're going to erect a tower on each corner. Higher than the battle platform, but this will give us vital intel on people approaching our base. No one is getting into this base. The only way in and out of this base is our ladder system which is a very dangerous thing to climb if you're an enemy. This is our water fortress. And in the middle of our fortress, we have a valuable vault. This is where we're going to store all our valuable resources and our most prized possession, our beacon. Remember, if this thing gets destroyed, we are out of the game. This cannot be breached. We must protect this at all costs. And that's our base. On day 11, we finally came out of our base cocoon. I was on a simple scout mission, which was successful. We found plenty of bases. But on returning to my base to refuel, I spotted an enemy base so close, I don't know how we didn't even notice them. And this was a hazard. These enemies we needed to annihilate. So, I landed the plane back at base, and it was all hands on deck. We decided that we were going to strike first, and part one of the plan was going to be bombarding them from the air. See, Thomas here, like I said in the intro, he's the brains of the operation. And this guy, let me just say, he had a genius plan. Tomers, who was mining under the ground for a few days when we were building the base, noticed that a few caves had signs of life in it that wasn't from us. So he knew if he could find those caves and then find those mines, maybe we can find a back door into their base. Winning the war between his faction without barely spilling blood. But here's the thing. If the enemies know that Thomas is underground looking for their tunnels, they'll block every single way into the base up and it won't be a success. So we need to keep them on the surface. And how to do that? Well, attack them. It's that simple. Part one of the plan began. We knew that since it was early days, not many teams would have AA guns in the sky, allowing us to bombard their base with barely any repercussions. So a squad of two of us took off to attack the base. It's better to strike first instead of striking back. So we began our air raid. As you can see, the bombs that we we're dropping aren't doing much damage, but they're not meant to do damage to the base. It's just meant to kill them. But also at the same time, this is a distraction. If they're up repairing their base, 
they ain't in their minds. Tomers right now is underground looking. We have one simple job, keep them on the surface at all costs. The bombing raid was going perfect, until one fatal mistake where a teammate dropped a bomb on me. Rendering my plane useless, my propellers are out. I was gliding. I thought at this point I'm gonna glide into the water and the enemy team are gonna come and clean me up. But through a miracle, I managed to glide the plane home at the perfect height. I landed it safe. I now knew since we had one plane out of the sky, it was best to bring home the other plane. These things were expensive and not cheap, so I called the other plane home. The plane that I have in my hand currently, that'll be repaired shortly. But it was now time to commence phase two of the plan. And that was to head over on foot. We knew we weren't getting into their base. See, look at this. If I pause this, on the left hand side of the screen here, they have a pillar box. And on the right hand side, they have another box. And then they have a very, very small bridge. If you step on that bridge, you will get bombarded from right and left and knocked into the water. Once you're in the water, you're a sitting duck. Water bases are incredibly hard to attack. We knew that. And that's why Thomas was underground looking for a weak point. Finding their tunnels, hopefully. We started a fake siege on their base. We did attempt to run for the door, but we knew straight away it would be a fail. This is explaining the pillar box situation perfectly for us. So we decided just to fake a siege. We knew that this was drawing all their men and all their resources up to the surface. It was perfect. We stayed for ages, holding down the fort, while Tomer's dug peacefully underground. We battled here for a few days, just holding our ground. We were there for so long, they even launched a plane on us, bombing their own base. Too bad their pilot didn't really know how to fly. He did more damage to the base than to us. We kept fighting, trying to get closer and closer to the base because we needed to make this look believable. But then I think we believed in ourselves. Because without thinking, we jumped onto their main base area. Without a plan, without a strategy. And let me just say, when you don't have a plan to attack a base, it ends fairly quickly. Now, time to commence part three. And that's keeping them on the surface for a long period of time, even when we aren't at the base. And how do you do that, might you ask? Well, see, we have a thing called a big massive cannon. We went to the shoreline near their base and we set up an area of operation. Shortly after, we set up the cannon and we started firing in. See, if we cause enough destruction here, they will be repairing for a few days. Shortly after firing the cannon, Thomas came into our chat saying that he had found a tunnel that wasn't ours and he was pretty sure that it led to their base. He blocked it up and he went back to the base. We continued to do as much damage as possible because we knew if we could still get them distracted when we go to attack their base, it would be perfect. But the enemies joined our call, asking for a ceasefire wanting the constant barrage to stop. We agreed, but we weren't going to be allies with them, even though they wanted that. But we said we'd have a meeting with them in a few days. Ironically enough, they actually wanted to have a meeting with us, because I think they wanted to be our allies. We didn't want any of that. They were too close to be our allies, and we'd cause too much damage now. They'd backstab us the second they got. And also, we already had allies, who I'll show who they are later on. So Jack and I decided to go sneaky peeky like. We knew where the tunnel was and we wanted to investigate it. And the best thing to do was to go in there and scout it out first. Find out what we're going into. And let's just say bringing a big army in, sneaking in, is it's not very sneaky. So we decided to go as a two man. We were even so prepared that we even had silencers in case things got hairy. So we entered the tunnel that Thomas had found and we knew the direction that we had to go. There was only one way. After a while of sneaking down the tunnel, we came to a dead end. That only went right. We just had to keep going left, so we took the first left we could. Then we came into some sort of lava cave, when we noticed that we were in the heart of their base. And it was left open. We knew straight away that we were possibly in their beacon room, just from the setup that they had. See, we were in the kill box area. The only thing is the enemies were meant to be in here and we were meant to be out there, outside that door. 
we knew their beacon had to be somewhere around here. If we can destroy it, we have successfully knocked out our first team. And knocking out a team that's right next to us like this would be huge. We searched for ages. It looked like they had a maze. But eventually, we found it. Knocking them out of the game. But this is the interesting part. The enemies up above who are still repairing their base don't even know that they've been knocked out. It's game over for them. Their base is essentially our base. We snuck home, extracting out of there with their beacon. This is when we got into a call with them and said, hey, we'll be over there in five minutes to have a chat about our allyship. Five minutes later, we were over there speaking to them. We were talking about being allies, but really we were just faking it. Then I asked, can I get a tour of the base? They started touring us the base. Now this team were very set up, showing us the vault room, which they would not let us in, but we knew it was ours anyway, but we didn't say anything. Then I asked them to show us their beacon. They were a bit reluctant at first, but then they showed us. Basically, F behind this is somewhere is a beacon and I'm not gonna say more, but yeah. Um. Uh. I'm missing something? They were out of the game, it was over for them. But we actually recruited Caden and JCO to join our team. The other people on the team went to other factions. They didn't want any part of us. We quickly showed them how we got in and the flaws in their defenses. This base was now ours, we owned it all. We had an extra AA gun, we had extra planes. JCO even had lots of ammunition and he had two bunker busters in his base already made. If you don't know what they are, they're missiles. This was a huge success. Job well done. Early on day 32, we got the distress call that our allies were being attacked. Now, let me explain my allies to you. See this base right here? These are our scientists. They're our allies. They're not fighters. These guys know how to make technology and they want to help us win the war. So every two days, we set up a trade route where they bring us supplies and we protect them. But see, they had heard radio chatter that an enemy was going to attack them. It was a Mill Ruse's team. They wanted blood and they were coming for Forrest's team. Immediately, as good allies, we dispatched an aircraft and two good men. The aircraft would be there first. That was me. We would do everything in our power to keep them safe. They've helped us out a lot. It's the least we can do. And we also love them. They're a very nice team. We've had a good relationship for ages and we want to keep them safe. Now that I'd given backstory to who these guys are, it was important that we defended them. They were making our technology after all, and technology is what wins you the war. Because they were working on a top secret mission that I can't even say right now, but you'll know soon enough. And a deeper meaning behind this defense was that the plans for our top secret mission were inside this base right here. We couldn't let it fall into the enemies, otherwise the cat was out of the bag. I circled their base, Knowing that if any enemies attacked, they'd have to deal with us too. No one showed up. Until when I was just about to return home, they started attacking. Forrest's team information were correct. They were right about the attack. Forrest's team stayed in the base while my men and myself fought on the outside. Me in the plane and Jack and Doc on the ground. I started bombing the enemies, trying to keep them away from the base. This is when Jamie Raven messaged me in the chat saying, Team on Forrest, we have a nuke. Well, I wasn't changing side. These were our good allies, and they knew our world domination plans. Straight away after that message, I dropped a bomb, killing the leader of the group in Mill's Ruse. We knew that this would upset the attack, but for how long? He was the head of the operation, and he was out. I kept dropping bombs on the rest. This time, they definitely looked a lot more disorganized. They didn't know what to do. They started running off one by one, but I stayed on them. This is when I heard the screams. The enemies had managed to get a bomb super close to the base, but it wasn't close enough to do amazing damage. They got away lucky this time. After that, I went full throttle, and I really put the pressure on them, bombing them and keeping them at bay. That's when they dispersed from the scene. It might look like Forrest's base is absolutely destroyed, but it was mostly damage on the outside. Their base was safe, and the defense of Forrest's team was a success. For the next few days, I left Duck and Jack stationed at Forrest's base to protect them and to look after our interests. So I left with Duck and Jack still there. 
A few days later, we get the alarm raised from Jack. That the base is under heavy fire and it's going to fall any minute now. I made the quick decision to throw all our resources to Faris's base. See, the fighting had been so heavy that Jack didn't even raise the alarm to us. We didn't know what was going on. Because for the few days, there had been constant fighting going on. But they had managed to defend every single one. So we thought it was another cat fight. But this time, it was a real one. In a matter of minutes, Faris' team fell. It was over for them, and they were out of the game. Leaving us alone, and with no allies. The enemies had stormed the base, throwing everything they had at them. They didn't stand a chance. It was over. We were all here. The enemies were in the beacon room. We were doing our best to hold them back. Some of them were dying, our teammates were dying. It was awful. But at this point we knew the cat was out of the bag. See, the enemy team knew about our plan now. And we wanted to keep it a secret. But they had raided all the resources from Faris's base. Our blueprints to launch a Soyuz rocket with a death ray into orbit. They now knew our plans, and so did all the server. I guess we'd just have to do the plan now, with them knowing we're going to do it. And just be the first to get it in the sky. Rest in peace, Faris's team. You'll be missed. Now, I must explain this as well. Luckily, with every team that gets knocked out, you get a few of their members. And we got Forrest on our team, and a few others, so they could help us build the Orbital Death Ray. But this was when it was time to declare war on a Mills team. Before construction of the Orbital Death Ray could begin, we had to take out our arch enemies. If we don't, they will come for us when we least expect it and disrupt all our operations. They started it, now it's time for us to end it. It took days to plan our attack. And throughout those days, the enemies were trying to fly planes into our base, trying to disrupt us as much as possible. They feared we were going to launch the death ray soon, but we were nowhere close. And each time the enemies tried to attack, we were draining our own resources. We knew a Mills team had to go, so we launched a full-scale attack. We left two people at the base, and everyone else came. Notice how we brought Forrest with us, who's not a fighter, but Forrest was motivated. She wanted revenge. We headed across the icy plains, when we spotted an enemy plane in the sky. We all ducked and got down. This was a Mills team, and he was heading straight to our base. Luckily, we were able to relay the info back to the base, and they had the AA guns armed and ready in the direction that he's coming. He won't get in. The plane left, and we continued our journey across the icy plains. When we got to the base. Now here's our attack plan. This is why it took days. We studied their base for hours, thinking how we can get into this monster fortress. And we all came up with the same conclusion. That 90% of bases all have their beacon underground. So how about we burrow right through the middle of the mountain and ignore 90% of their base? Our whole plan depended on this. So I started firing, barraging the hill hoping that it exposed something. But it wasn't looking good. After a while of bombing the base, I decided we needed to get closer. We had to go into the area that we just bombed, but this wouldn't be easy. They were dropping grenades off the top of the hill, bouncing on the ice. These grenades were deadly. If they hit you, it's over. They could wipe out a whole army in seconds. So we needed a distraction. So we had people on the right-hand side of the base, and as you can see, they were definitely distracted on them. Lobbying their grenades at them instead of me. Well, I'll tell you this, it should have been me they were throwing their grenades at. We had to find a way in. I was hoping, and then I spotted copper cables. We had found a weak point into their base, and they knew it. Jamie Raven jumped down to try and kill us. But he only died himself. Separating from his team, not a good idea. We now just had to find a way to get in there. See, we couldn't stack up or break blocks in the base, because that was the rules. We had to put down TNT, blast our way in. We started placing down TNT in various locations where we thought we could get into their base from. We knew it was just above us, we just had to get a way up. When, all of a sudden, I blasted us in. I don't know what room this was, but it was a big empty room, with a stairs leading up. We were in their main chest room. How brilliant. Now, let the games begin. We have to find their beacon.
That was it. The war was over. All the planning for hours studying their base worked out like a charm. That's the thing. When you go into these, you need to have a plan. There's too many moving pieces. There's too many people to manage. And one thing I've noticed, people are all confident before the fight. But once the shooting happens and the explosions start happening, everyone loses their mind. That's why you need to be a decisive and strong leader. That's exactly what I was. They were out and their base was now ours and get all the resources that they got from Forrest's team back to ours. Now I must say there were multiple teams getting knocked out. I don't know exactly how many teams were left on the server right now. It wasn't just these three teams that you've seen get knocked out. There's been other little skirmishes and other wars going on in the server. We were just not aware of it. And it wasn't long after when a Mills team got dispersed onto enemy teams that the news that we were making Orbital Defray got out. This triggered the arms race. A few days later, the arms race began. Everybody on the server went into a new era, and that was making the best weapon that you could possibly make. And no, they're not guns. They're not planes, not tanks. They're missiles. Some people making nuclear missiles, and some people even trying to make black holes. But we were launching an orbital death ray. But to do that, we needed to spend hours making it. Well, when I say we needed to spend hours, our scientists needed to spend hours. Remember, we won the war against the first team and we got JCO, the mad scientist? Well, now he was hooked up with Thomas, the brains of the team. And also Forrest was down below working on making our base an absolutely defensive machine. See, the first thing we needed was we needed to make sure that we were safe from other enemy missiles. So to do that, we needed ballistic missiles and we needed a radar system. This radar system would warn us of any missiles coming in and would also guide our ballistic missiles to shoot down the enemy missile, protecting our base, keeping us safe and letting us work on whatever we needed to work on because the orbital death ray is not an easy thing to make. The radar took days, but we didn't complain. They were working as hard as they could. We turned JCO's old base into a research center. And also, because some of the stuff they're working on is incredibly flammable and could explode. We don't want that in our base. This is when the enemies knew what we were doing. They wanted to stop us at all costs. And they knew we had a research base. One of us tried to bomb us, but they crashed. We knew that others were around. We started getting concerned. Things were quiet, but the enemies were here two minutes ago. See, I spotted them on the hill a few minutes ago, but now they're gone. Something wasn't right. Hey, they're underneath our base. Get them out. Get them Wait, out. Wait, our out. base. Yeah, yeah, they're underneath. They're underneath this base. Main base what? or JCS? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you move me into those? Also, come on, come on, come on. We gotta go. We gotta go back to main base. We gotta go. Wrap up everything. Quickly. We gotta go. Okay, yeah. Uh, for take all the thermal electric. I'm gonna take I am. the polymer. I am. I am. Take it. With, do take your time, but hurry as much as you can. They're down below. Okay. Okay. We just had to give them time. The radar was made, we were ready to go back home and start working on the actual orbital death ray. And just as it was time for our scientists to leave the base, they commenced their attack. They were too late. They were already down at the bottom of the ladder. It was a bad attack strategy. It didn't matter. We were leaving anyway. It was time to commence phase two. And that's actually building the death ray. The radar was up and running. And that right there was a ballistic missile. That's what's gonna shoot down any enemies that shoot a missile at us. We were safe. Now it was time to make the death ray. See, here's the thing. To launch the orbital death ray, you need a rocket. You need to launch that rocket into space. That's what's going to be the hard part. For days, the enemies tried to bombard us, trying to stop us working on whatever we were working on. The enemies knew what we were doing. Well, I suspect they do. All I know is they definitely didn't want us working on this. Once this thing launches into the sky, it's game over and we win. And here with the radar, we could track every single plane that was in our airspace. We could call out coordinates and tell our AA gun people which direction they were coming. They didn't stand a chance when they got close. Once the enemies knew that the air raids weren't working, they decided to do a ground attack. Well, our base was designed and ready to defend against that. This happened a lot. And we held them back for hours, taking minimal damage. They even tried to set up an outpost on the edge of our land, but we didn't allow that. Days later, it was time to start building the launch pad. This was going to be the anchor that was going to launch our orbital death ray into space. We just had to build it. But this isn't going to be easy because the enemies keep attacking. 
But even with all the constant attacks going on, our scientists kept building. And not long into the project, the launch pad was complete. This was our launch pad. An absolute beast of a thing. And this was our rocket. This is what will be carrying our death ray up to space. Time to launch the rocket. We had 30 seconds to protect this thing. If we do, it'll be a success. It was now time to end this thing. A few days later, we all were prepared for war. There were three teams remaining. One team was already currently fighting with another team, sticking together as a unit, protecting me. We had a doomsday device right in my hand. And if this falls into the wrong hands before we can continue the mission, it's over. The first base crumbled within seconds. They were no match for us. Onwards to the next base. We kept the momentum going, attacking the second base with absolute force. We bombarded them with explosions when we found a crack in their wall and we flooded in. The inside of their base was compromised and we found their beacon. They were out of the game. It is now the finals. One more team stands in the way of our victory. Let the final battle begin. Right, that looks like their game where the obsidian is or something? And then it looks like it goes up left, so let's just see if we can clear it. Now, the thing with Death Ray, if we blow up everything, we're going to make it awkward for us, too. It's looking over the wall. We're yeah. To figure out which one's they, the base. They haven't spotted us yet, so it's fine. Well, okay. That was way too right. You have to go way more forward. Nice. That, that was a beautiful hit. Okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that was perfect. Let's, just yeah. Out, let's just figure out what's going on here. See, look, there's cobblestone there as well. Is there a base right there? Sure. That, that's kind of the they middle. The missile. Of the they have a missile in there. All right, I need to get uh, that power. The player is shooting us. Fine. Do we have anything to shoot you down? No. Go around the right. Go around the right. We can see if there's a way in from the right hand side. I'm trying to blast. I'm trying to take apart. Run, careful. Run, right, move, 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 move. That plane doesn't have any bombs. It's gonna do nothing. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, plane has, that plane has no grenade. Just gotta watch out. The biggest threat, they, they don't seem distracted. Yeah, hey guys. <laughs> All this is just nothing. Like, this stuff on the surface is nothing. Can we we can get fully up. Yeah, yeah, we're up. We're up. Keep moving, soldier. Ooh, Come on. I should have died. So that was it. The base had fallen. Now I must admit, I had one of the best teams that I could ask for. And without our scientists, the brains, we wouldn't have got this far. We had won the battle, and we had won the world war. The server was now ours. We had won. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys would like to see another type of video like this, but where it's hardcore and if you die, you're out, do let me know. It would be very similar like Murder Island, and it would be very sad when you lose a friend. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed this journey. 100 days in a Minecraft 4. Who would have thought?